Today I want to talk about, I guess the title of my sermon today, if I had to put the title, is Reasons Why I'm Not Grateful. <coughs> <laughs> so I thought, you know, it says there's a word in, in each one of these chapters. I'm going to start in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. If you want to turn there, just turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And uh, we're, that's where we're going to start today. But in this chapter, and in Colossians, the other verse I'm going to share today has this word admonish in it. And so I was like, well, that, you know, everybody said, what's the word admonish mean? So you know me, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm not a really good student, and so I have to look up, I have the internet on everything, my cell phone and my laptop, and, you know, so I looked it up this morning, I said, what, are, what does the word admonish mean? So I need to admonish you in the Lord, right? So I mean to... I need to warn you. That's part of the word admonish. There's a warning in that. Huh? There's some advice in that too. All right, I have some advice for you this morning to help encourage you to walk in God. Uh, also, I have some words of encouragement for you. I want to encourage you this morning in the, in the Lord. And also, I want to urge you to stop complaining. That nobody here, I know I'm probably just talking to everybody else that's not here today, but I just want to say it anyway after the Lord told me. But so, you know, does anybody have like that problem of complaining? Sure. Huh? Yeah. You know, like sometimes you just catch yourself doing the same things you shouldn't say because yeah. we're just so ungrateful sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, oh, did I say that? I slipped up a little bit. But I say, you know, it's, it's, it just comes out. You don't know how it comes out, it just comes out. And I love what Andy, uh, Pastor Andrews, uh, talked about last week about uh, being tempted. And how sometimes in our sinful nature, we allow, we have an opening to the enemy, and the enemy gets in there and starts, you know, uh, we start listening to the wrong voice, we start saying things that we shouldn't say. Right, so I want to, maybe we'll talk about that. And then I want to remind you this morning of what the Word of God says uh, about this wonderful uh, words of complaining or in being thankful. Amen? So let's look at this uh, chapter uh, right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to start with verse 12. It says, Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord, and who admonish you. That's where I get the word, right? Verse 13. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other, and we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with each other. Hello, be patient with me, right? Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always take, um, try to be kind to each other and, and, and to everyone else. For verse 16, be joyful always. This is great, right? Be joyful always, pray continuously, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. I pray, Father, that as we encourage, as we admonish, as we, we try to um, help each other to be like you and walk in your will, God, I ask that you help us to understand your word, change our minds, change our hearts, whatever needs to be done, God, so we can be more like you. So the love of God will flow through us. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So let's go back to the verse 18. And I just want to share just a few things with you. Um, and maybe a couple stories. Um, so this verse 18, this is a part of Scripture. When you read Scripture, I don't know how you read Scripture, but when I read Scripture, I kind of take it literally. Like, what does it mean for me? So I could be in Genesis or I could be in Revelation. I don't care where I'm at, but I read it and I say, Wow, how does this apply to me? And then I look at how do I, how can I share it with you guys, and then with my, first my family, and then with you guys. And so now I look at this, and I look at verse 16, and I said, be joyful always. I had to stop right there again. I mean, I could get past it, right? Be joyful always. I mean, if, that's the, if I had the whole Bible, there's nothing, there's nothing but blank pages everywhere, and I just read that one verse, and I said, I stop right there, be joyful. Now I have to examine myself. Am I joyful in the morning when I get up? How many are joyful in the morning when they get up? Some people are. I mean, I don't, it's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. But <coughs> how many get just joyful in the morning? We got one hand raised. So one person gets up in the morning and goes, Woohoo, God, I got another day, right? Those are people you kind of avoid because you want to have your eighth cup of coffee before you get there, right? 
<laughs> some of us do. So, but be joyful. So, why are we joyful though? So, you get up in the morning and say, well, I have to be joyful, but I'm not. So, so I'm just going to encourage you, right? Let's, let's, uh, the other part says, pray continuously. Maybe my joyful is contention, are, are, are continuing on my ability to pray. Because when I pray, what are we saying? We're saying, I need somebody. I need God's help. When I pray, I'm saying, I can't do this myself. When I pray, I say, God, I'm relying on somebody greater than myself, right? So when I pray, I'm asking God for help. I'm asking God for encouragement. I'm asking God for direction, right? Or I'm just praising Him because of what he, he did for us. So maybe I'm joyful because I realize the sin that God taken away from me, the penalty of sin that he, he paid the price for me, so I can be joyful that, hey, my destination is no longer the place that is opposite of heaven. My destination now is going to be with my Father in heaven because God restored that relationship with us. So maybe when I pray, I'm joyful because now I realize my destination. So I can get up in the morning, no matter what my bills are, no matter what circumstances I'm living in, no matter what's happening around me, I can be joyful because God took this wonderful penalty from me, and now I restore to him as, as we said earlier, his children. So I get up on the morning, I go, hey, I'm joyful because I'm God's daughter, I'm God's son. I can be joyful because I know that my God takes care of me, and he's going to provide for me. And maybe I don't have enough money in my checking account today, but I know God's going to take care of me no matter what, right? Amen. Because yeah. cir the circumstance I live in is not who I really am. So I'm joyful for that. Amen. It Amen. says pray continuously, give thanks in all circumstances. This is my where my downfall is. I don't know where you're at today. I mean, be thankful for everything. Okay, Amen. I don't have the food I want today, but I'm happy I got this, right? Amen. I don't have this beautiful car, but I still have a car, right? I have a, a, a place to lay my head. I have things that we, we have so much in this country and so much in our lives that if we were just thankful, would God give us more? Maybe if we were more thankful, we'd be more gracious and then we'd be able to be more giving and more loving. I don't know if it works that way, but it seems to work that way for me. So I'm just trying to say, I know when I'm not that way and I get complaining how things don't quite work out the way they're supposed to. But when I'm joyful and I'm praising God and I'm worshiping Him, Man, my whole attitude changes. I want to encourage you this morning to do the same. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> right? Let's get with, okay, it says, and give thing, it says, uh, and also I'm saying, and uh, for this is the will, what is God's will for you? I know God's will is that every person in the world shall be saved. Amen. I know that. It's God's will that every person, there's no person that God doesn't love, doesn't care for, doesn't give a second chance to. There's, God loves everybody, and God wants to restore everybody to a relationship with Him. I know of that. And then I see this, I read this again, I said, and this is the will of God. The will of God is that you be joyful, that you pray continuously, right? That you, in all circumstances, give thanks. I was uh, getting ready for Thanksgiving, and you know, sometimes... Uh, we read all the stories about the history of Thanksgiving. Last week, we shared that, uh, a little bit of the story of how, why we celebrate Thanksgiving. So I learned uh, something new, and I, I, maybe I learned this a long time ago, but it's just something new. In, um, in uh, the early pilgrims, when they came to America, or they came to this country, and they were the first, we always celebrate the Thanksgiving, like they had this great big feast, right? The Native Americans got together with the, with the pilgrims, and they had this big feast, but never realized the years before that, how the pilgrims almost died, like a lot of them died, right? There was no, there was not enough food. They didn't bring enough with them, and, and they were starving, and a lot of them died. And so one of the things that they did at this feast, they would take um, five kernels of corn, and they put it on a plate, and they'd set it on a table with the rest of the meal. Some people still do this today, and I didn't really realize it. And the reason they did that, because those years before they celebrated that big feast, is that all, that's all they had was five kernels of corn a day, and that's what they survived on. For that that winter, and so that's why they do that. And I didn't know that. So they, when they celebrated that first Thanksgiving year, not, not only did they um, have a great big feast because they got help from the Native Americans then, but they also uh, had this plate to remind them how God brought them through that harsh winter and harsh times. So some people go through harsh times, and they're still thankful because that's what they did. They thank God. God, thank you for the five pieces of corn. Could you imagine living on five corners of corn a day? I don't, I, it's been a long time since I've eaten, been in want as far as food is concerned. But there are times we have. But in those times we were in need, we just thank God. We didn't know anything. God, thank you for the food we have. Like we had five children. I lived on a military paycheck. I don't know how we fed them. 
But today, they never knew we, we were in need, right? We talked to them about it sometimes. They didn't know. We were just thankful. Thank God for the yeah. three more cups of water goes in the soup so it spreads longer or whatever we did. I don't know what Tina did. She's a miracle worker. But we pray and we thank God for those times. And we remind, we remind that. So when you're in lack, thank God for what you have. When, you're in, when you have plenty, again, you rejoice in that. Let's look at another verse uh, and chapter before we get into why we complain too much. Let's go in Colossians chapter 3. So I want to encourage you first, and then I'm going to let you know maybe what we need to change in our lives, right? Colossians chapter 3, and we'll go to verse 12. This is um, Colossians chapter 3. It's just one book back before Thessalonians. And chapter 3, verse 12. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Hold yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Everybody there yet? <laughs> uh -huh. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have, uh, you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgives you. And, o and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together with perfect unity. Verse 15. I could preach on that one just by itself, but I won't. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since, uh, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing praises and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart towards God. And whatever you do, whatever in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks to God for your Father through Him. I believe this, this one section is like, this is our, you could read this verse every day. To God, how am I supposed to wake up in the morning and how am I supposed to live? In peace and harmony and loving people, right? Even loving the people that, you know, wronged you or the people that you need to forgive. We need to love so love becomes <coughs> out of us. Right? This is the will of God, that we be in unity, look at, put on love, and bind them up together in unity, let peace, the peace of Christ rule your hearts. Why do we do that? Why do we have to be patient with each other? Why do we have to love? Why do we have to be in unity? What, what does it do to the body of Christ when we're like that? What happens to us? Huh? It, it, we demonstrate the love of God. We do, let us demonstrate the character of Christ in our lives. People are not drawn to us. Wow, those are really friendly and kind people. We want, to, we want those people to be drawn to Christ Jesus, amen? And they'll come to know the love of the Father and the forgiveness and everything that they need, just like we have. But when the church itself, as a body of Christ, are not doing these things, and I don't want to get too negative today, but just to let you know, but if we're not clothing ourselves with compassion, or kindness, or humility, what is humility? It's like putting others before ourselves, right? It's like I'm going to put myself in a lower position to, and raise you up to a higher position. I'm going to humble your myself to you so you can be exalted and know Christ and know the love of God. I'm going to humble myself and raise, up, raise you up and, and put you in a different place than you think you are. Well, I'm no good. I'm not worthy. No, yes, you are. I'm going to help you. It might take a sacrifice. It might take a little bit of gentleness. It might take some patience. Amen. <laughs> and the word of the Lord, though these words are not here by accident, but how many could use some patience with other people? Come on, I'm just trying to be honest. That's right. right? How, how many could use some patience with other people? Just like, oh my goodness, okay, all they do is complain, blah, blah, blah. And they say, oh, you know what? I love you. <laughs> and I love you some more. And as they complain, you say, hey, I love you. You're such a, I, God loves you. I love you. You do know before the foundation of the world, God loved you too. Yes. Right? Do you know when you were forming in your mother's womb, God loved you? Right? What happened? You exalt that person to a place that, that you just, oh my goodness, you just give them, up, give them honor and then it changes their, their whole, see people, you don't know what people are dealing with today, right? You don't know. We don't know what their tr struggles are. We don't know what we people are kind of even in our groups. You know, we do in our group. We have two mission communities right now. Andy's leading one. I'm leading the other. We're looking to start another uh, one or two. And in those groups, we we're able to share more intimately about our lives. 
And that's a, we cause an atmosphere of that, you know, and we lift people up, we encourage them, we try to say, hey, you know, it's, yeah, it's, you got to, you, you got bad, you know, yeah. but God got an answer for you. And let me help you understand what that answer is. Amen. We lift them up and God, we change the word. Thankful. So let me, I, get to, I just kind of got off track a little bit there, but um, <laughs> I just, just, just want to encourage you, you know, that's just what God said. But let us, um, let verse 15, it says, let, it, let the peace of God, Colossians 3.15, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, just as members of one body, you are called to peace and be thankful. So what, I mean, I don't know what you're going through today, maybe you're struggling with that, but what happens all of a sudden when you flip the script as we shared a few weeks ago, we flip it and say, instead of complaining about something, we'd be thankful. Right? So maybe you don't have a big mansion house with all the fixings. You got a little house. Maybe you don't have all the things that everybody else has. But what if you've just been thankful for that thing that you have? Then all of a sudden, everything looks different. Oh, thank you for the stove. Thank you for the refrigerator. Thank you for the little microwave I have. I could have a bigger one. But, uh, thank you for the microwave. You know, and you just begin to think, thank you for the couch. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do that? Well, yeah, on my car, I have this whole, uh, my truck. And I do it all the time. I get in my truck, and I like, thank God for my truck. It's an older truck, right? Yeah, yeah. So instead of saying, oh, man, I wish I had a nicer truck, and this looked better, or whatever, I'd say, no, I, I have this truck. I can use it for snow climbing. The church is our parking lot this winter. Thank you, God, for my truck. Do you ever do that? Like, we do that for my car. Or when you when you you arrive somewhere, when you're driving, you're like, thank God, thank you, God. It's just a different attitude, right? I, I want to live in peace. I want to live in love. I want to live gratefully and be thankful about things. Now, why don't we be? Why aren't we thankful? I have this whole section about complaining is a sin, but I'll just skip that. <laughs> Psalms 106, 25 says, They murmured in their tents, and they did not obey God's voice. So when you murmur, you don't obey God. Mm -hmm. James 1, 2, and 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials and various kinds of, uh, various kinds, of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. But when you complain, you can't do that. Right? Uh, Philippians 2.14 Do all things without grumbling and questioning or complaining. That's, that's in the word. So you can look at Philippians 2.4, right? Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, but only such as good for the building up as it fits for the occasion that, you, that it may give grace to those who hear it. So if we're not giving grace, <laughs> what are we doing? Look at y'all. Y'all looking like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I come this morning to be encouraged. Okay, well, I'm trying to get there. All right. For James 5, 9. Do not grumble against one another. You're talking about the brothers in Christ now. You know, we're not talking about the unbeliever. We're talking about just the church itself, the body of Christ, the believers. Right? We're grumbling about this and we're grumbling about that. You know, they didn't have the sound or the heat wasn't hot enough because well, the internet went down. We were complaining about that yesterday. So we're like, is the internet going to be ready for Sunday morning? I don't know how it worked, but this morning it's working. So praise the Lord, right? Because now we have the internet so we can do our music and stuff. So, you know, we just, we get, we got to catch ourselves. We start complaining too. How come that doesn't work? Or how come this doesn't work, you know? Well, the offering wasn't big enough or whatever. Instead, like, praise the Lord. God provided everything yes. that we need. He's been doing it for 11, almost 11 years now, and he's going to continue to do it because God knows that we're doing the thing that he wants us to do here in Madison, Wisconsin. That's to make people, help people be disciples of Jesus Christ. Right? To help you grow and mature in Christ Jesus. Right? So, yeah, we can complain things ain't working right, but you know what? We can also celebrate at the same time. Look what God is doing. Amen? Doesn't that change your attitude? Right? Get up in the morning and say, Woo! God, another day! Celebrate! Yeah. Celebrate Jesus. Put on some of that music, you know, that like makes you happy. Dance around the room a little bit, get ready for work, and go to work and celebrate Jesus, right? It's not, it's not that easy. I know it's not that easy, because we get in, I'll get into that in just a second. Okay. And First Peter says, uh, show hospitality one on... Oh, this is a good one. Oh, my God. This is a good one. Put this, look in the Bible right now. First Peter 4.9. This is a real good one. Because 
in our church family, we've been saying, hey, we need to practice hospitality, right? We need to, we need to uh, invite people to our house, invite them to our, 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 our dinner time, invite people to come over, right? I, I, I shared a while back, don't invite them to church first, don't invite people to church first, invite them to your house. Get to know their story. Tell them your story. Tell them God's story, right? And that's what we're learning in our missional community. But 1 Peter 4, 9 says, show hospitality to one another without complaining. Uh -oh. <laughs> Is anybody guilty of myself? Oh, sure. <laughs> right? Right? Because not I want to be hospitable. I want to show the love of God. And all of a sudden I start complaining because oh, i got to get the house ready. got to get the why not cook, peanut cook, 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 you know, got to cook, get everything ready. You know, and all of a sudden now we're not really uh, being hospitable at all. Anyway, those I just want to show you those are in the Bible. From Pastor Bob. <laughs> All right. Why why do I complain? Or five reasons why it's hard for me to be grateful. You ready? Five reasons. This is five reasons. Okay. Uh, time and habit. Today's society. I mean, you guys are so busy, right? With school and activities, and you're going and you're going. And you don't have the time, or you haven't had a habit of making it that way, right? So you have to take time to be grateful. You gotta be time to take. You gotta take time for that, right? And I say, well, I always say, well, you need to have time to read your Bible. You need time to pray. You need time to be grateful, right? So, but when do we take time to be grateful? Like you, you get in the habit of doing it. You need probably some some uh, uh, they call uh, maybe some natural triggers that would trigger you to say to be thankful. And that's the one example I use. So as soon as I get up in the morning, before my feet hit the floor, maybe I say to thank you Jesus for this new day. Yeah. You say it. You don't have to like do a big prayer. You know, but saying, hey, thank you, God, right? Or, and then when you get down to it, and you get your breath mix in the morning, or I don't know if you pray over your food, we kind of do that all the time. I like doing it in the middle of restaurants because I know people are listening. <laughs> oh, God, thank you for the waiter and the cooks. And thank you, God, for this wonderful food, you know? And I, I sometimes, I, I know people are listening. <laughs> Tina doesn't get embarrassed that very much, but, you know, sometimes it's just, thank you, Lord, you know? I mean, I just feel led like that. Sometimes we say, be thankful. Thank you, Jesus, right? Because people don't do that. I remember when the kids were all led over in the right, we take the kids to the restaurant, you know, very, very rarely. And then, um, you know, we pray over the meal, you know, we pray together. All the kids would hold hands and, you know, we pray over our McDonald's burgers so they won't kill them and <laughs> take all the chemicals and plastic and everything that's in the pan. <laughs> anyway, we pray. But we thank Jesus for our food, and then, um, you know, we'd eat, and, and it would be, people would make comments about that, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so nice, you guys pray together, you know, like it's a rare thing. I thought it was like a normal thing in America, everybody prays over food. Do you pray when you go out to a restaurant at all? Yes. Yeah? Are you embarrassed to do that? You know, if you're out, you say, hey, be a light for Jesus. If you get persecuted during that time, guess what? Jesus got persecuted, that's what he said. But anyway, just, you have triggers, like little little things that will remind you, like getting up in the morning, maybe over your food. Or like I said, for my car, when I get in my car, thank you God for my car. We have a, um, a red car now. Uh, it's the best car we ever had in our lives, the, Tina and I. And we just, we, I thank God I can get in it. Right? Thank you for this car. Is that silly or just being thankful? Right? Being gratitude. So maybe we, we need to do that. How about uh, family time? Do you, uh, there, there's family time where uh, some of that family stuff is dealt with. You know, when you're gathered with your kids or your children or your wife, right? Maybe we can, you can take time to be thankful. Like Tina and I, we pray at night usually. So we pray for everybody. We pray for our family. We pray for our grandkids. That's a long time. Um, five kids, five grandkids, <laughs> grandma and grandpa. So we do that. And then we pray for you guys. And then at the end of that, we just were, we, we, I don't know how you are when you pray, but we, at night when we pray, it's like we shouldn't be sleeping, but then I get excited. So then I'm up till later in the evening because now I'm excited because what, then I realize what God has done. When I start thanking for everybody, I thank for my kids, I thank for my, my uh, grandchildren. You know, my grandchildren love Jesus. That's why I just tell my kids, all I want you to do is love Jesus. Love Jesus. Well, what ministry? You know, I just love Jesus. God will call you, God will love you. Love Jesus. Some of my grandkids love Jesus, right? Love Father God, know Him, right? Because you could pray all those wonderful things, but I just want them to love God, fear God, right? And then 
whatever happens, if they're businessmen, if they're preachers, or if they're whatever happens, it's great, wonderful, God is great. But what happens after that, then I, I begin to think of, as the end of my prayer time, then I start thanking God, like, God, you did this, and you did this, and you did this, thank you, God, thank you, God, and thank you, God, and thank you, God, and thank you, God, and then I just, that's it, I can't sleep, because now I'm all excited, because God has done so much, and yeah. so it's, it's like, in your family time, take time to be thankful with each other. Uh, how many married couples do I have here? Do I have any married? One, two, three, four. So married. You know it's really hard when when you were married to, to pray together, right? Do you, do you ever struggle with that? Yeah. Is that? You know, why is that? I don't know why it is. It's because you're what I can, because Tina really knows me. Oh. And she, I know her. And then sometimes we have, you know, it's like that little bit of, you know, I'm trying to act like somebody she really knows I'm not, right? <laughs> so not to ask for forgiveness. And go on. So, yeah, to be thankful with your spouses, right? I mean, you know, and you, because it's really easy to get in an um, uh, ungrateful attitude and start complaining about things. It's like, we don't complain, uh, we don't complain often, so I'm trying to think, give it a good example. So, I'm just thinking, like, you know, because Tina's very content, and I'm, very, I'm a very contentful person, and believe it or not. So, like, we have a house, and we have stuff, and it's great, we're happy. Right? We're not like, I don't need the next bigger car or the next right. video game or the bigger TV. Because you know what they had on Black Friday and everybody had these TVs on sale. So you get like a 10,000 inch TV for 50 bucks or whatever it was. I don't, know. You know, I don't need that, right? But I could get it. I could afford it, but I don't need it. So I mean, just so we'd be grateful for what we have. And that we've always had an attitude like that and it's changed the way we look at things. So when we do get blessed, we're just real, we're even more grateful, you know? So I just want to encourage you and as a family to start to change the way you talk about it. Like children, like, well, our kids aren't around anymore, so if you're sitting around a kitchen table, what if you kind of need to start, like, you know, I don't know about, we do this at the, our mission community, so we talk about our day. What if you said, hey, what are you grateful for today? What if you tell your little kids, I was like kind of aiming with the little ones, I don't know if you sit around a table, maybe around the TV, but, or whatever you guys do today. But you know what I'm saying? But what if you said, hey, what are you grateful for? Just start a conversation. It can be kind of awkward at first because it's something new. But I tell you, it changes the, the atmosphere in your house when you start being grateful. Wow, God provided this. God provided, well, I got a good grade in my test today, Mom. Wow, thank Jesus that he gave me that ability, right? So now we have an attitude of gratitude that's flowing through our family, right? I like changing a phone call conversation like that when I get calls. Pastor, uh, the sky is falling. <laughs> And I said, oh, praise the Lord. God's putting you through something, and you're going to learn something. <laughs> right? Hey, praise God. Oh, your, oh, your car broke down. Oh, praise God. You know, that means you got an opportunity to witness to somebody because somebody's going to have to come help you fix the tire. And then, you know, you're going to get to meet that guy, and then you got to pay the bill when you get there, and you got to meet that guy. And praise the Lord. Look at all the new people. <laughs> come on, right? Praise the Lord. It's just an attitude, right? Complaining is contagious. Number three, complaining is contagious. So if I start complaining, Linda won't complain. But anyway, uh, but we can just, you know, we can talk about, you know, we start complaining about anything. And all of a sudden, everybody in the group is complaining. This is the thing that I uh, I learned to flee from. Remember Andy, which, uh, Pastor Andy was sharing last week, or a couple weeks now, you know, when temptation comes, we should flee that temptation. This is another area when temptation comes, when people start complaining over and over and over about something, just get out of there. Yeah. Just leave. You know, you can make an excuse like, I have to go to the bathroom or I gotta leave, you know, whatever, you gotta leave that conversation, you know? Yeah, I thought about that, I was reading this, uh, writing this out, and I'm like, yeah, you know, you can flee or you can change the conversation. I'm kind of cha I like challenging that way. Sometimes you don't make as many friends that way, but it's kind of fun. We'll see what they do. When you're around a group of Christians and you go, and they're complaining about something, and you go, uh, hey, in Philippians, it says complaining is a sin. And you're like, everybody's like, ooh. <laughs> so what are you saying? I shouldn't be talking like this? No. So, but again, it's a temptation. I believe when we start complaining, we open up a door to the enemy, and then we start going back to that fleshly yes. desires over our spiritual walk, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of walking in the spirit and, and encouraging and admonishing and lifting each other up, right? And we start complaining, and we're, we're just we're tearing things down, and that's not what we're supposed to do as believers, right? Christ came to give us life, and give us life more abundantly, so when we, give, we can give life to a conversation, or we can bring people down, or a situation down. So we have life, the word tells us that we have life in our tongue, and we have death in our tongue. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
right? And you have a choice to, to use it either way. So we need to use it to bring life and encouragement on life. So when you get in that situation where a bunch of people are complaining, or with relatives, right? How many of you have that? Right? So easy not to, uh, uh, you know, start complaining about stuff, but it is uh, harder to go back to the Word of God that says, oh, we should pray for those that are above us or both are in charge of us. Right? We should pray for the, our boss and our co-workers, right? We should lift them up, lift each other up. So that's, that's a little bit different. So complaining can be contagious, so be careful about that. I believe it opens up the door to the enemy, and it just flows in and flows in and flows in, and it's kind of hard to stop, right? And then you have to just take a step away and say, no, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to do that. You have to physically, I think you have to physically take a step and say, no, I'm not going to complain or or uh, like I like to say, shut your mouth. <laughs> then nothing can come out. You shut your mouth. Um, or maybe you're just an ungrateful person. <clears throat> this is the hard one. So maybe we're just ungrateful. We've never been grateful. Because we've lived in a horrible situation, we've had a horrible life, we've had bad things happen to us, right? But as a believer, you, there's one good thing that happened, right? I asked Jesus to forgive me, and he forgave me of my sins. And that means I'm clean, and I'm now his child. And so I can be grateful for something, right? And a lot of times when people are complaining a lot because they're ungrateful, it's because they've been hurt. They've had little bad situations, things have happened to them, and so then it makes it difficult to um, be grateful. <coughs> and what we, we see is that a lot of times people that are totally ungrateful is because they're looking at the big picture like, oh my God, look at how we're, the world screwed up. This is, you know, things are bad, right? This is horrible. They're not, they don't, they're just looking at the big thing and they don't know where they fit in that. So then they start complaining more and more and more. But if you just focus a little bit on where you're at, and I mentioned earlier, like, hey, I live in this house and I have heat and you know I have if you look at the smaller things like in the micro sense of being grateful for just the small things then you can change the attitude of where you're at. Amen. And sometimes us as believers that are not in that situation need to be that encouragement for other people, right? And lift them up and pray for them. That so they don't feel feel bad because you know it's like we don't want to scoop like, oh I do this wrong and I I do this wrong and it's like I never can get better. That's what sometimes people do. I never can I never can measure up. I never can I never get past this anger in my heart. I never get past these things. There's a lot of hurt in people that are, are continuously not grateful. And maybe we need to love on them a little bit more and then find out their story. And when we find out their story, then we can pray for them. And maybe we can help heal that hurt that happened to them years ago or just something recently. I remember, um, I can't share this story. Um, but anyway, I've, I've met a lot of people that are very ungrateful because, and a lot of times the reason they are is because of past hurts and disappointments. And if you can talk about that or you can get to that point, you can help heal that hurt and then you can be a grateful person. So we have a responsibility, church, to help those, right? Um, or we just come complacent. Number four, we just come complacent. We, we're just, we, you know, we have what we need. We've been working hard. You know, we we're, we got our house, we got our car, we got our things, we got our degree, we we got a good job, and now we're just hey, I've got it all, so hey, I'm, we're good. I don't need to be thankful. I I, I got everything. And then those people have to go back the other way. Like, okay, I have all the things because of what God That's gave right. me the ability to do all these wonderful things, yeah. have this wealth and this education yeah. because God provided for me. And then you have to also also make a you just have to make a conscious effort to say yes, I know I got this. So you're grateful to him for what, what he's done for you. And just say how awesome God is. And uh, one of the uh, people I've reached and said, you know, maybe you just take a long walk, you know, down the beach somewhere, go through the woods, and just see how mad, how wonderful God is and what he's done. And know that he's real and that he has created all these wonderful things and he's created you with these abilities to do what you have. So not getting a place, that's probably, the, probably where a lot of people in the church are. Hey, I, you know, I'm good. I make it to church, I can build or pay. Oh, man, I mean, I don't have struggles. I mean, I did all this. Look what I've done. You know, what do I need? And all of a sudden, we stop praying. Maybe we stop reading our Bible. We have everything we need. We just, you know, hey, yeah, God's over there. I know that. And we're kind of distant, but He's not here. He 
because we've become complacent in what we've done in our ability, we don't get thankful to God. I mean, because God, I mean, I think, seriously, I think God will bless you even more. So you can be grateful and give and share and love on people, you know. Hey, what if you had a lot of wealth and you saw a lot of people in need? God said, hey. Or maybe you didn't have a lot of wealth, you did it anyway. You were grateful and you just began to share because God has provided for you. It's interesting how, I was going to talk about tithing and so giving in the first verse a little bit, but it's like when people have a lot, they don't give as much as people that don't have little. I don't get that. I don't understand that. <laughs> People have a lot, they're like, they're like, oh my, look what I got. I got to open another IRA, another CD, and then I got to open up another account to put all this money in, instead of going, and instead of giving it away because God blessed you. But it seems like, you know, most of us that don't have a lot, we just like, we're just givers, right? Because we're thankful for what God has given us, amen? Don't be complacent and, and, don't, and don't realize that it's not, all, it's not on you, it's God has given it to you, right? And I guess... Also, you can be thankful or complaining um, because you've been spared from things. Right? You go on the news and you see the, the fires and the disaster and the killings and all the stuff that's happening all over the world, and we get like, you know, we've been spared from that. It's like, so then we get, we don't, we're not, we're not, we're not grateful for that. We just kind of like, oh, what, wow, look what's happening. Well, that's really bad. Well, I'm glad I don't live over there. You know, you know, is that just me or is that so no, us today? You know what I'm saying? So I, I said, what, what, what's the solution to that? Like, what, how can we, how can we um, be more grateful? Yeah, I, and I don't know, like, this is a real answer for everything, but you know, when you see all the despair that's happening, even in Madison, there's a lot of people that are homeless still, there's people that have need, there's women's shelters that need help. There's the food banks, people come every day to the food banks, and they're, they, they, there's a lot of things going on. There, we have soup kitchens in Madison, Wisconsin, where people, that's all they, they live off that. We have Meals on Wheels, where that people get that one meal a day, that's all they get. There's a lot of needy people just in our neighborhood and around us, you know, and I think sometimes because we, we get complacent or just like, okay, yeah, we, we're, we don't live like that, so we don't really do anything. I think, I think to change that, just start doing that kind of stuff. Go volunteer at the soup kitchen. Go down to Second Harvest and help distribute food to people that come in and eat. I mean, just carry out their grocery. Make them feel special. That's what some some uh, some people do. They go down and they just go grab the groceries, help them gather the groceries together. And some of the ladies that come, a lot of guys come too, but you know, like, usually it's the ladies uh, that come there and then they they, they 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 help carry the groceries out to the car. Like they're special, you know. Like you know, you're not here because you're no different than anybody else. You just have a need right now. We're gonna help me. So I'd say like. And I, I want to encourage our mission communities to do this too, but as a whole, but we should just like help people. Yes. Like, like we can really appreciate. Maybe we would complain less because then we see people in need and just be gracious to them. Mm -hmm. And like you uh, shared earlier, Linda, this the love. Where does how do they receive love? You know, it's probably. In, I mean, if I go to have to go to a soup kitchen right now to get some bag of groceries, I'd probably be a little embarrassed. Right? I mean, it'd be hard for me to go, you know, ask, go to, there's a few downtown, you know, hey, I need some groceries this week because I'm short, you know. And they'll probably treat me nice and everything, but I just, like, feel bad. You know, what if you were there just to be that greeter person, to love on them, say, hey, it's okay. Right? Maybe it's okay that, you know, that you're going through this because God loves, it doesn't matter what you want, God loves you. His God love never changes. Right? Maybe we complain less when we see, actually put a face to the needs in our community. Amen? Would that happen? Because I, if I took up, took up my, my time, I'd have to take some time, and I'd have to, you know, like, leave my comfort zone, my routine of life, and maybe on a weeknight or a Saturday or whatever you can do and go help somebody. I think that would change our complaining a little bit, right? I think we'd be more grateful to what to, to God and what He's done for us. I'm gonna just go back to the first. Uh, let's go back to First uh, First Thessalonians that I, I closed this morning. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16. It says, 
says, be joyful always, pray continuously, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Verse 19, do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to what is good and avoid what is evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Man, he's faithful. He's coming back. Amen. Amen. I think our part is verse 16. Be joyful always. Pray continuously. As Paul wrote this at the end of this chapter. Give thanks for all things in all circumstances, for this is God's will of Christ Jesus.